Hey, what is going on guys? Talk Norwich City here, back for another video. Um, I thought I'd do a Q&A in this video, mainly because there's nothing to cover about Norwich City, but I still wanted to get some content out there. And you guys always ask, ask for Q&As, so I thought today would be the perfect opportunity to do one. So let's get straight into it. The first question is from Hannah Lloyd, and she asks, do any Norwich City players watch your videos? And if yes, who are they? Um, not sure if any Norwich players watch my videos, probably not. Uh, but I am followed on Twitter by a few Norwich players uh, like Nathan Redmond, Josh Murphy, Harry Toffolo, quite a few of the youngsters um, and I'm quite good mates with Cam McGeehan but obviously he's gone to Luton now. But the Norwich City players would have seen my channel at some point um, but I'm not sure if they've watched them. I probably wouldn't watch them if I was them. Isaac Burridge asks, what is your all-time favourite Norwich City 11? Um, I'm going to do this in a separate video because there's way too many awesome players to talk about. So I'm going to do that in a separate video. So Isaac, keep watching the channel, hit subscribe so you never miss out. And that video will be coming probably in the next month or so. Charlie at Redmond with an X, that's pretty hipster, asks, favourite Norwich player of all time? Um, probably Grant Holt, but that's probably like the... Um, general answer that most Norwich fans will say in my generation. If not, it's this man, Mark Tierney. Don't know why, I think he's an absolute legend. Really, really sad news um, when he retired because of injury. I loved Mark Tierney, he had personality, he was a decent footballer, just really liked him. Hence why I've got a frame shirt. <laughs> David Michael Ives asks, why did you get seats at the front of the Barclay? The view is terrible. Um, yeah, the view isn't great down the other end. Down our end is absolutely superb, you know, we're like, a foot away from the players pretty much so that's awesome the worst bit about them seats actually is there's the, the roof doesn't cover us so when it rains we just get absolutely soaked that's horrible i'm not too cared about like me getting wet but i carry a bag with loads of like cameras and laptops in so i'm screwed if that gets wet so i get really nervous about that um but i love the seats and the main reason me and chris moved was one so we could get a seat next to each other um and two because the atmosphere is just 10 times better uh, so i really like the seats but i would move to the e block of the barclay if i do get a chance and i hope that'll be uh, a possible next season nathan barrett asks do you do youtube as a full-time job or do you go to college slash work um i'm still at college uh, i go to sixth form and i do media uh, and television production and business. I've done sociology last year, but I dropped that. Um, don't know why actually, because I got a pretty good grade in it. But yeah, I still go to college. Um, and then to, uh, to make some cash, I do promotional videos for companies, uh, done some voiceover work, promotional tweets, make a bit of cash from YouTube, not much. Um, and just general crap really to get myself by. But my outgoings aren't too much, so I don't really need to earn too much money. My only outgoings are like, uh, football tickets, camera slash laptop slash memory cards and all that, um, and then like food and stuff like that. So I haven't got much of an outgoing. So, um, but the plan after college is to try and make a full time job out of what I'm doing currently. That won't mean all my money comes through YouTube because that's just not possible for a channel of my size. But to go into like making promotional videos for companies and, and doing a bit of voiceover work and doing some presenting stuff like that, that is the dream and that is what I'm going to try and make happen. The lovely Anita Brian Phillips asks, worst video slash reporting howler. Um, because of the joy of editing, I haven't really had many um, howlers. I make loads and loads of errors in my videos, but you never see it because they're all edited. In terms of live stuff, um, I've done a 12 hour live stream with Ball Street. Um, that was all live, but nothing really went too wrong there. Um, probably the worst stuff is when away fans just get in your videos. I can remember Charlton at home last year. We just lost one nil. It was an evening game and it was manic. There was Charlton fans everywhere. Some of them wanted fights. The famous banter vine came from Callum Rivet. It was just chaos, but it was really funny. So I've never really had a report in Howler and I hope I never will. Tom Sykes asks, would you want Jamie Vardy at Norwich? Now there's two answers for this. My head says no, because he's, a, he's just a bit of a scummy person. I don't really like Jamie Vardy. But the heart, I don't know what says what. He's a great football player, really good, would obviously scored goals at Norwich, but he's just a really scummy person and I wouldn't like to associate him with Norwich City. But if we signed him, I probably wouldn't turn him down. That sounds horrible uh, and really bad, but yeah, probably would take him. Max Cook asks, best away day. Um, I've had some cracking away days. I love away days no matter what the score. Um, 
Obviously, the obvious one would be Wembley if you count that as an away day. Uh, everyone will say that. That was just a magical, wonderful day. But in terms of that, Everton away, when we drew 1-1, when Basong scored a last-minute winner, was mental. When we beat Ipswich in the playoffs. But I'd probably say West Ham this season. It was 2-2. Uh, the atmosphere was incredible. We had like an hour of singing and chanting in the pub before. Got a few bevvies down. Um, then we went to the ground and the concourse was on another level. Like, see, I'd never experienced the concourse like that. It was manic. Then the whole 90 minutes was amazing. Then me and Chris stayed in London for a bit. Uh, we met up with some West Ham fans, went back to a social club with them and then got the, like, the latest train back into Norwich. So that was a really good away day, not necessarily because of the football, but just the whole day in general. Uh, and the atmosphere was just amazing that day. Amy asks, where do you think Norwich will end this season? Um, I'm putting it out there, we'll stay up. We will stay up. Um, in terms of where, I think we'll be near the bottom, probably like 16th maybe. I'd. Yeah, I'm going to go with 16th. Got to go with 16th. Charlie asks, uh, this is Redmond again. Redmond, but with an X. Um, best Norwich game you've ever been to? Well, beating, obviously I've said it before, but beating Millsborough at Wembley was just amazing. Um, probably except for that, it was Derby County at home when we won 3-2. Uh, it was when QPR fans invaded their pitch because they thought uh, they got promoted. But that Simeon Jackson 95th minute winner will always live inside of me because oh my god it was incredible um i was in the aviva community stand for that game i didn't have a season to get that time so i just used to like buy tickets wherever i could get them um and that was um, oh my god just oh what a flipping goal uh <laughs> the commentary as well chris gore and one of the best bits of commentary i've ever ever heard everything about that goal everything about that game robbie savage at the end was like nearly in tears oh it was brilliant that is easily my favourite game, apart from the win at Wembley. Easily, easily, easily. Amy asks, if you could interview any Norwich City player, who would it be? Um, well, I've already fulfilled my interview like icon. I always, always wanted to interview Grant Holt and that happened. I was oh, over the moon when that happened. To get that in the bag was just mad. Um, so. I'm happy in terms of interviews, but in terms of a current Norwich City player, um, I'd probably say like John Ruddy. I find John Ruddy a very interesting man, very family orientated. Um, and I've criticised him a lot this season and I would love to see if that affects him personally because I know obviously not just me, but he's been under cr uh, criticism a lot from Norwich fans and I'd love to see if that gets to him. I'm sure it does, but I think John Ruddy would be a really interesting interview to do. Um, so, McNally, if you're watching, get me in, in links with John Ruddy, mate. Let's do it. Let's do it. Claret of Blue TV asks, advice for starting uh, my new channel, which is very similar to yours. Um, I get this question loads, like advice for new channels, and I don't think I'm the most experienced person to talk about it. I don't really like answering it because I feel you should make your own way uh, with anything you do. You have to learn for yourself. You have to do make mistakes to, to get better. And I think... My best bit of advice for anything, not just YouTube, but anything is, is small improvements, but consistently. It was a, um, a technique that was brought in by the Sky uh, cycling team. One of their coaches brought it in and said, to, to get one big progression, we have to make small improvements on a regular basis. So in terms of YouTube, that would be starting off just recording yourself with a phone or whatever you've got your hands on, and then maybe um, get a few graphics overlaid, um, maybe purchase some editing software and just making really small steps instead of getting like a grand's worth of camera equipment, a grand's worth of like computers, uh, fancy light and just make small improvements but on a regular basis. That's the best way, that's the quickest way you'll learn um, and the smoothest transition as well because you can't learn everything at once. I'm still learning how to use cameras, I'm still learning how to edit but if you do it slowly and, and, and but small improvements like every single day, you'll be fine. So for example, like I'm always looking to improve but it feels like I've never improved. But when I look back at my first ever video, I've improved loads. Um, but because it's been so slow and so gradual, but really small improvements, I don't really notice. And I think that's the best way. Alice asks, how long does it take me to get to Cow Road? Um, in the car, like 40 minutes, I'd say on a match day, because the traffic gets pretty hectic. It normally takes me like 30 minutes, but about 40 on a match day. The train from my house on the train to get to Cow Road, probably like 50. Um, and on the bus, probably like an hour. So I'm not that close. 
Billiam Roy, I love this guy. Uh, he asks, what would you rather fight? 10 Wes Houlihan sized Dia Mercia Macanis or 10 Dia Mercia Macani sized Wes Houlihans? Okay. Um, well, Umbakani is just an absolute animal, so I definitely wouldn't, have, wouldn't want to fight him. Wes seems like a good guy, but I reckon he's got a bit of fire in his belly. I reckon he could, either of them could take me, but um, I'd probably say I'd have a better chance against 10 Wes Houlihan, no, 10 Diamersi Umbakani sized Wes Houlihans, I think. I don't even know. I'd, I'd rather fight Wes any shape or height than Mbakani, definitely. Josh McCarthy says, I've seen you at every away uh, game this season. Uh, can I get in a future video? Say hi to James Bream. Hello, James Bream. Um, yes, get in a video. Come and see me. Say hello. I don't bite. Um, I do sometimes. No, I don't. Um, yeah, come up to me, have an interview, whatever you want. I'm always, always, always happy to see fans uh, have their say on the club. Lewis Middleton, uh, otherwise known as Dirty Leeds. By the way, mate, I love your channel. I think you're doing good, good things. Uh, says, what would you, um, what would be the perfect genuine transfer window for you? Keep it realistic. A centre back, don't know who. A striker, maybe, don't know who. Uh, and try and get Jarvis and Mbakani wrapped up on permanent deals. That would be brilliant. Amy once again asks, what is the worst game you've ever witnessed? Um, there was some dull, dull games through the Chris Hutton era, but for me, just for like personal reasons, Birmingham away, nil-nil last year. We didn't have a shot on target. It was freezing cold. I had the worst earache I've ever experienced. Oh, it was it was horrible. Birmingham away, not not a good one. Not a good game. So that is it for this Q and A. Thank you to everyone who asks questions. I hope I answered most of them. Some of the questions I didn't answer. Uh, were because I've answered them in previous Q and A, so go and check them out. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Leave it a like, uh, leave it a comment if you want, and share it about on social media. And I will see you very soon. Peace out.